Good morning, Bucknutters. It's Thursday, April 13th, 2017. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. Joined, as always, on Thursday by Steve Wiltfong, Director of Recruiting for 24-7 Sports. Steve, how are you this fine Midwest morning? Good morning, Daniel. Fired up. The Pacers clinched the playoff spot last night. Going to go into round one against Bill Kerlick and probably all the listeners, Cleveland Cavaliers. Pacers have won five in a row. Cavs have lost four in a row. Who's smelling an upset in the first round here of the defending NBA champs? Drinking my smoothie. The sun's out. I'm actually going to be in Columbus, Ohio this weekend, breathing my or visiting my brother. So that's God's country for most of you guys as well. So uh, I'm, everything's on the uptick for me. Went to opening day at Wrigley this week. Uh, life's good. Yeah, that smells more likely your smoothie than an upset, but I digress. There's other people coming to Columbus this weekend besides Steve being such the family man, and that is Ohio State is hosting its annual spring game. And as I look at this list, five to ten years from now, you've got about $50 million worth of football players coming to visit. Just an unbelievable list of prospects. What Steve and I are going to do is go down a list here. It's just We've gone through the visiting list, which you can check out on Bucknuts. That's been updated daily for about two months now. Go to the board now if you want to see a complete list of the prospects visiting, commitments, prospects, etc. We've picked out a good number of them. We're going to go down the list here with a quick chat on each as an update. And there's no better guy to do it with than the man on the national scene, Steve Wolfall. Okay, number one, arguably the top running back in the country, Zamir White. There's no argument. He clearly is the top running back in the country. Ohio State, uh, last time we talked about him on the Bucknuts Morning 5, had him as the biggest threat to Georgia. Clemson was the considered the longtime favorite there. Georgia uh, has made a late run. Ohio State has hung around in there. I think there's um, some confidence around the Woody with, with some of the people I talked to that think that they have a shot at Zemir. And uh, there's some people around Zamir that are high on Ohio State, so we'll see how the, how the weekend goes. It's a need position for the Buckeyes in this class, and, and, and Zamir White's been is, is target numero uno left on the board next to the young man already committed out of Florida and, and Sneed. Very impressive. You should look at uh, how guys do in the NFL recently, but I digress again. Number two, now this guy is going to be, the, I mean, we said we were going to talk about him most in this year of the BM5, and I have to admit, I didn't think this would ever happen, but Jackson Carmen, who claims Clemson is his leader. Yeah, he said for now, when I asked him if that still held true on, on Sunday at Cleveland's Nike football training camp. He also talked to Bill Kierleck. The, the crystal ball didn't dance when when Jackson said that Clemson was his leader. But, look, just like Ohio State's capable of going into Georgia and beating the Bulldogs for kids, and and just like Ohio State's capable of going into Texas and beating the Powers in the Lone Star State for kids, Dabo Sweeney and Clemson can beat State U for uh, a blue chipper. And I'm not predicting Jackson Carmen's going to go to Clemson. Uh, I'm still riding with Ohio State. But Clemson is a program at this point right now, having played in the last two national championship games with a head coach that's very involved in the recruiting trail and a coaching staff all the way down to their off-field staff that gets it in recruiting. Don't sleep on Clemson. I'm not trying to generate uh, page clicks or, 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 or nerves. I'm just saying Clemson, the interest in Clemson is real uh, when I got to talk to Jackson in person about it. Now, I'm still going with Ohio State. He's going to arrive Friday. He's going to spend the night. Ohio State's going to recruit the hell out of him. He's going to get there several times, and, and uh, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, it, it's gonna, I, I, I think this one's going to be tighter than I had originally anticipated. If Davos Swinney comes into Ohio and pulls out Jackson Carmen, it will be the number one recruiting grab of his entire career. 
I don't care who he gets for the rest of the time there. It's never been done. No one has come into well, Ohio the, and gotten a guy that good recently. I'm not saying he can't do it. It's to be watched. Well, the Chris, and if he can, the Christian he Wilkins grab. I mean, he's from Connecticut. When they, he's from Connecticut. Uh, no, 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 no question, but the, but it's just the Christian Wilkins recruiting win. No one was even talking about Clemson. I dig it. I'm talking specifically so, about getting someone that good I out get of it. Ohio. I get it. I get it. And he Number went into three. Georgia and got, but 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 he went into Georgia and got Trevor Lawrence. I mean, so you're, 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 you're Georgia border, South Carolina. I I, I dig it. He can pull it off. I'm not even saying he can't do it. If he can pull it off. I'm saying it would it would put Swinney to me into the. I mean, he'd be. He'd be I think he's already, on, uh, you got the Sabin uh, Meyer door. Already, no way. He's he's already in. It. Jimbo Fisher's in that group too. Um, those, Next those, year. I don't no think way. so. I, I, from a recruiting standpoint, I got I got Urban, Nick, Jimbo Fisher, and, and Dabo as the as the four, um, and then I would have Harbaugh after those guys. I would let Saban and Meyer in first, and then those guys would have to wait outside for five minutes. So that's cool. <laughs> Number three, Frederick Frederick Juice Scruggs. <laughs> I learned today his, his name is Juice. Another offensive one yeah. kind of bubbled up recently. Yeah, I'm close to Crystal Ball in Ohio State for Juice. I wrote that in my article and then saw some action after that on the Crystal Ball uh, with others jumping in on Ohio State. The only reason why I'm waiting is because this has been an Ohio State-Penn State battle for a while. Juice is coming to Ohio State this weekend, scheduled to be at Penn State next weekend for, for their spring game. Juice Juice grew up in the same town that Urban Meyer's from. He absolutely oh, loves Coach boy. Meyer. Uh, and he lives in Pennsylvania now. Uh, but he grew up a Buckeyes fan. Um, got a, I, I like, I really like where Ohio State's at. Asked some people around Ohio State, um, and, and, and one, one person had said that Penn State's really pushing here. So I'm not, my toe is in the water. Uh, I feel really good about Ohio State coming into the weekend. I just haven't taken the plunge with the crystal ball pick yet. Yeah, my, my imagination leads me to believe. A spring game visit can make one take an ST plunge. Another offensive lineman who's bubbled up recently, Jake Cradle. Well, Jake Cradle was at the Cleveland Nike camp and, and, and spoke with him afterwards, and he said that Ohio State uh, is recruiting him as a center, and uh, it was a dream offer for him. And the other two schools that are high on his list are Pitt and Maryland. And so mm. Ohio State – Ohio, uh, with all due respect to those programs, Ohio State doesn't lose recruiting battles to those programs for kids they want. I immediately crystal balled Cradle to Ohio State when he got the offer. Um, he had said that that was the game changer, the team to beat. Um, and, and so, you know, obviously we'll see how it shakes out. But looking good for Ohio State and Cradle right now going into the weekend. And, and we'll see – what the line looks like of, of recruits trying to become Buckeyes. This is a really interesting one. Micah Parsons. Well, there's no question. He, he's really high on Ohio State. You know, he's talking to – he talks about the Buckeyes a lot, his actions. He's He's been to Columbus. Yeah, hold on. Penn... Let's mention, he's, he's verbally committed to Penn State for those who have been living under a rock. Yeah, um, and, and uh, so – Penn State battling to 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 keep him. I, I would imagine he'll be at Penn State spring game the following weekend. Um, but it's uh, it, it, this one's a battle, and Ohio State's in it. Cleveland native Tyreek Smith. That's another Ohio State Penn State battle right now. My crystal ball is on Ohio State. Penn State was out in front on Tyreek. They were one of the first schools to offer. They've gotten him to campus a, a ton. Um, Ohio State's coming later. Later, uh, They've also had him uh, in Columbus quite a bit. Tyreek spoke highly about uh, Coach Larry Johnson over the weekend. Uh, there's no question that's the top two. Notre Dame probably a distant third right now. And, but Tyreek's not going to decide until after a senior season. At least that's the plan right now. So a lot, lot of uh, – a lot of uh, – a lot of information and intel for him to gather from now until it's a decision-making time. Brenton Cox. 
Yeah, uh, Ohio State's in the top two there with Georgia for the Peach State product, and it's an opportunity. It's another opportunity for them to get one of Georgia's best on campus and go in the SEC country and into the state of Georgia and, and, and win another elite target. Cincinnati native Aeneas Hawkins, defensive tackle, stud. Yeah, he's a guy that's on the board and, and a guy that I think Ohio State would take, you know, I last checked, and uh, a guy that the coaching staff likes a lot. He's a twitchy player. Um, Aeneas is, uh, I believe Aeneas is closing in on the decision himself. Uh, that's in less than a month. Um, Penn State's certainly in there. Um, Notre Dame, Cincinnati, and, and Coach Pickle. I think right now, if I was, uh, I think this is another Ohio State, Penn State battle. And, and uh, Hawkins has spent a lot of time in Happy Valley. And uh, so uh, I'm starting to ramble a little bit saying the same thing on a lot of these guys. Uh, but Ohio State's right up there. And uh, I, I think, in such is the case, every year around this time, Ohio State's, uh, they're bored. Um, people can be moving around on it. And, Decisions will have to be made if if young men want to jump in the boat uh, because I'm not, how big is the class of Ohio State's even taken this year? How big are, how big is uh, what's Bill written? How, how big is how big is yeah, class are they taken? I said this publicly. I no longer follow that because that number is not going to stay the same. They're going to take what they want to take. This has been proven to me now, so I, I don't think it's going to be a, a super huge class. But once again, dude, you don't know, like, this time last year, did anyone think Marshawn Lattimore was going or Melly Cooker was leaving for the league? So right. that number is such a moving target. I hear you. but uh, And I think Hawkins is a great player. I'm always leery of guys in Cincinnati. That's just the way it is. <clears throat> this guy, speaking of leery, I'm also leery of guys in Toledo. Dallas Gant. I will say this. I don't know if this is, you know, obviously I've never spoken to him, but based on what I've read, and kind of the tone of voice of those I've spoken to, I don't think he's going to be a Buckeye. What do you think? Well, my gut has said Notre Dame, but, you know, I think everyone here knows that I have sources all around this recruitment, and, and uh, no one on the, uh, no one around South Bend has, has, has said anything to make me believe that they're way out in front, you know, or, or anything like that. I think this, I think a lot of people are saying the same thing. We're in it. You know, we got a we got a good chance. Notre Dame, Ohio State. He's coming to Ohio State this weekend. Both his parents are going to be there. Some other friends and family. So it's going to be another uh, big crew at Ohio State. There was some buzz that maybe Michigan had moved ahead of Ohio State. I never had heard that buzz myself. I just seen some colleagues report it. I still think it's Ohio State or Notre Dame. Um, and uh, these could be his last two visits. You know, I know they're going to try and take some other ones. Um, now, Dallas Gann always says Michigan State was his dream school. I know he's got great respect for that staff. Uh, his face lit up when I was in Toledo last week, and he, he talked highly about Penn State. Um, but Notre Dame, um, Ohio State, I, I still think those are the two in the best position. Ohio State's going to take another shot here, and then, then the Irish will get theirs next week, and then the coaches will be on the road, so they'll be popping into school and, uh, you know, leading up to Dallas's birthday and his decision. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, I, I will admit that his parents coming this weekend, when I thought he might be in, he was discussing possibly going to Michigan. Um, that's encouraging, but like you said, this one sounds like it's going to be – he may have a hat dance or, or an announcement that no one knows, which is always kind of fun. Another super highly regarded prospect, Anthony Cook. There's no question Ohio State's got a really good chance to land Anthony Cook, one of the premier corners in America out of the Lone Star State. Ohio State posted up down there in Texas last year and landed the top player in the state, and and Cook checks in at number one this cycle. And uh, there's some traction for the Buckeyes on the 24-7 sports crystal ball. I certainly could see him at Ohio State, and uh, this visit uh, could go a long way towards it. I'm going to finish off with a committed player who has said he's coming up to recruit hard. That's Emory Jones. What's your vibe on Emory? 
Well, I still haven't heard anything to make me believe that he's flipping. Uh, I've certainly heard things to make me believe that he's weighing his options, but all signs right now still point to him signing with the Buckeyes. Which is great, and I, and I cannot stress this enough. Having a Georgia guy up here is fantastic to help with recruiting, and I will say word is out that Emory Jones is recruiting. I spoke to a prospect recently, and he has already spoken to Emory leading into this weekend, so things are looking good there. I'm going to put you on the spot here. If one player commits to Ohio State this weekend, who will it be? All righty. Let me go back to the Dean's list. The commit Impressive. of the week. We didn't even mention guys like, as you look, I'll go over some other names of guys who will be here um, that we didn't break. Yeah. Kavion, I'm, I'm going to go with Jake. Smith and each. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Jake Cradle. You know, I think that he's a guy that could pop at any time for Ohio State. I think Juice Scruggs is going to end up taking his visit to Penn State, so I don't expect him to, to pop before going to Penn State spring game. So Jake Cradle would be the, the the leader in the clubhouse to to pull the trigger if if anyone does. And you never know. Let's hope the weather holds up and is great this weekend. If you've never been to Ohio Stadium, there who's tailgating? Uh, maybe uh Maybe I'll take my, my two-year-old out there in the morning. I won't be able to attend the game because, you know, we'll be trying to get some recruiting updates after it. But maybe uh, maybe that's where I take my boy Saturday morning to run around on, on Ohio State's campus. And Anyone who wants some live recruiting coverage, get in touch with Steve Wolfong. He's willing to come hang out with you for free beer. Free beer and juice for the young fella. We'll see you guys. Have a good one, Bucknutters. Bucknutters.